Thank you for staying with us. We're still looking at the development in Gabon, and uh, we still have our guest in the studio. Let me come to you now, Dr. Roy. The ousted president in the video was calling for help, asking, you know, well-meaning people, his supporters, you know, to call for help because he didn't, he doesn't understand uh, what is going on. He said he's on house arrest and that uh, he doesn't know where his son is, where his wife is, as it is. His son has even been accused of treason, uh, as it is. There's also the matter of falsification of uh, his signature over one thing or the other for corruption and all. But when you look at his call for help, and saying people should make noise. What do you interpret with that? Because even the people now went on the streets, you know, some were said to be chanting, you know, the, the, the country's anthem, some were celebrating and all of it. But what do you make of what he said? In the, in the first instance, um, during the election, the internet was shut down. So I don't know how the noise will be made. But let me tell you what I capture from that. You see, I have been opportuned to be in places where power is discussed. Mm -hmm. And I understand that anybody close to funds and resources is a vital tool in global manipulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so such a person could be asked to sort out XYZ things or XYZ people. You know, such a person could be used as a transit. If I want to send some people to Africa, I could land you in your place and you could give them soft landing and yeah. I can from there get into Nigeria, Cameroon, any other country I want to go into. You know, so when someone like that level is calling for help, my first military sense told me that he's talking to those that are benefiting, have benefited from his rule and tenure as a president. Because definitely he has bought into so many governments. Mm. He has bought into so many <clears throat> international strategies that are ongoing. You know, the, the movement of finances, resources, militaries. Yeah. You know, so he knows what he's talking, who he's talking to. I know who and what he's talking to. And I'm sure that those are the things that should be on power now and doing power play. But one thing is sure, that is this. The first constituency that I look at is the general masses. You know, no matter what you want to do, you may succeed to finally oppress the masses, but you can't oppress their voice. So whoever wants to come in there must still find a way to buy into the masses. And one thing that can buy Niger African masses right now is proper development, education, medical care, housing, good jobs, the currency, the value of their currency, countries they can go for holidays and come back, their self-esteem. These, are the, things, too much. these are the things that, and those are the things that are in the constitution. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you preferred in your political Cam statements. Campaigns. Campaigns. Mm -hmm. So if we can begin to provide those things once we see agitations, it will douse it. Why? Within the agitations, if there are any group of persons that is being channeled or fueled from outside, the general voice there will kill it. Once they begin to, like when I was talking about palliative, mm. I said, I don't want palliative in cash. No, sir. In the morning, I come out from my house, I flag a bus, I go in, I'm not paying, I go to work. In my office, you say, work and off some days. I gave my staff Fridays off after the in little increment I could do. That is palliative. When you say share rights, share, it doesn't work. What they can do as a president in that Gabon that you see now, if you see a new university coming up with all the money you have stolen and say, bring foreign medical professors, medical school, Oh yeah, it's free. You will see that when the military come in, you will begin to see this give and take. But the generality now is like 90% for the junta and 10% and for the existing outing government. Hmm. All right, let's, let's move forward a bit to the matter of the fact that um, the 
leaders of the coup in Gabon have named the Republican Guard Chief General Bryce Oligri in Guema as uh, the transitional gov governor, uh, president, uh, as it is now. And uh, there has been conversations around this person. Uh, he's he been accused of corruption, benefiting out of the corruption because he was he is seemingly related to the outside president. And then he has been benefiting from, you know, the corruption taking place. And now he also is now being named the transitional president. And it is often said that he that must come to equity must come with clean hands. And I'm wondering what is he in the right place to actually be leading this, this transitional uh, government now? Uh, what more, what difference is he bringing to the table? Because when he was asked about the issues, his investments across France and some other places, he said it's a personal matter. Talk to us from this uh, perspective. You, you know, sometimes when they use their choice of words, sometimes they tend to deceive us. Hmm. You know, when they say, the, the scenario they try to paint is like, some men did it, mm. carried out the activity. We were not part People, of it. Yeah. He was not a part of it. And then at the end of the day, maybe they not checked. Who, who can? Who? Mm. Do we go back to Roy? Or do we look at Veronica? Mm. OK, let's give it to Veronica. Have you? <laughs> right. But it's not so. Right. If you study the history of coup yeah. across the world, there's always involvement. Mm. Involvement in different forms. Because it's a very risky venture. Right. It's a very, it's a very risky venture. It is either you are in and you are taken, or you are in, you succeed. Hmm. It's a very risky venture, and they know it. And so, but for somebody to come out and eventually the group they are saying we have named. Are you trying to tell us that he was not in the know about the coup d'état? No, that's not possible. You cannot walk and go and bring one general from somewhere and say, "Oh God, come and take over." Absolutely, yeah. It's not possible. Who gives the command? Who sponsors it? We have seen situations where international committee has sponsored coup in Africa. Jamie Benwon, in one of his books, mentioned how when they go on courses in the West or America, how they are indirectly told and lured into going back to take over command in their countries. The kind of treatment they are given mm -hmm. to support them. What is the interest of France? What is the interest of America? What is the interest of the other bigger countries? The man you're bringing in and say, we named him. Has he not been a part of the system? Is he a foreigner? He's not. Did you import him from one other place to say, come and sit here? What difference is he going to make? That's the question. The man who is crying and shouting and saying, "You, hey, please, make noise. Who should make the noise for him? When he was there, how did he make noise to, to correct the sufferings of his people? How many of them with all the resources that were under his control and care? Who, who were his masters? The people who voted him who were supposed to be his bosses, were they his bosses? He's crying, and then the man you're bringing in, they're naming him now to come and be the one to take over. Transitional government, mm. they called it. Yes. If you're bringing him on, are you bringing him to correct the anomalies that the people are crying, are talking about, that he has not been a part of? That he has not been a part of the system? Or he has not been a part, or has not been fingered for corruption as well? Who is deceiving who? Who is deceiving who here? There's a problem and there's a fire that is burning and encouraging military uh, takeover 
in the Francophone uh, African countries, irrespective of the region, whether West, whether Central. And what is that? Who knows? That is what the African leaders, particularly like what, is, what ECOWAS is trying to do now, negotiate with the Niger Republic uh, 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 coup leaders. That is one thing they should begin to find out. What is the problem that is really eating up, that is attracting coup d'etat in the uh, Francophone countries? One, mm -hmm. it has succeeded in some other countries. And what did AU do? And then the, 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 and the regions, yeah. other regions, what have they done? Is Niger the first country to suffer from military coup d'etat? No. Right now, is there no West African countries where we have military in leadership, in government? It's encouraging. They're discussing with themselves. Some people are looking at it from the other point of view to say that Africans are now wanting to take over the leadership and of their themselves. own. And, you know, yeah. ignore. We have seen some other Francophone countries to say, we want to disconnect from your policy of assimilation and integration, France. Yeah. We do not want all of that again because you have used all of that to siphon what belongs to us. Mm. And then what is the, what is the situation? We, is this one going to be the end or the last we're going to see in terms of coup d'etat? Is it not? I'm asking you. You cannot ask me. I have Because to. from the wind, from the, for between 2020 mm. and 2023, we have had not less than eight coup d'etat. Yes. What do you think? What does that tell you? Mm. It meant that we are talking about Niger. That of Niger has not been settled. We heard that of Gabon. Gabon, this is the second time it's happening under Ali Bongo. Bongo. Yes. In 2019, yes. they there had a attempt. failed yes. coup d'etat. And now, are you saying now that they came, they wouldn't have learned from the experience they had in that of 2019 because those who were arrested are still languishing in jail? Yes. And so the other countries are watching. Is this a new order? In Africa, is it an order meant to unsettle Africa? Is it an order meant to reorganize Africa? That's a big question. But if you say it is, uh, it is an order to reorganize Africa, I will tell you no. I will absolutely tell you no. Because it is not in the place of the military. To do that. It is not, I repeat, it is not in the place of the military in any country. That is why military in governance is an aberration. Mm. The, our military in Africa are diligent. They are good at what they are meant to do. But how do we even take care of them in the first instance? Some of them sit and watch you civilians. Who don't put your lives at stake? Squander the resources of your country and leave most of them in abject poverty. How much are they paid? Mm. They do more jobs than you, the civilians, do. But they are, risk their lives and they are killed in most times, hand gone, please. There are those who will say that they signed up for the duty. Because they, are... they signed up for the duty, have you even imagined what it would take if military goes on strike? Mm. The veterans went on strike at a point in time and right. protested. Right. Why were they protesting? They were in service. What did you do for them? Those of them who lose their life. Have you ever thought of it? Do you know it's a crime for the military to go on strike? Mm. But imagine if the military, the three arms, say we are going on strike, we are packing up. For now, no more military. Do you know what will happen to that country? You say they signed for it because they signed for it, they should be left to die in abject poverty. And then they, oh, watch, oh. they watch corruption. They watch how civilians take over everything in the country, and yet when there's crisis in every part of the country, even internal crisis, internal security, you draft them. Uh, to does go that mean the they should al always intervene in po political or democratic Treat processes? everybody well. The resources that were kept under your control are not meant for you to be siphoned. You pass them on to other, uh, uh, West, other uh, countries in the West and America. You go there and, uh, and keep your money there. They use your money to trade. Use your money to develop their place. Mm. And then these same people here, who will risk their life? How many presidents will carry a gun to go to, to war? That is not his duty. Oh, really? Mm. Really? 
It's not his duty. But the duty of the man who will stand there to receive bullets on his behalf will be watching him while he steals all the money from that country. So this is what is pouring what we are seeing now. Basically, that's so what you're part seeing. of it. That's why, again, today, today they are giving, some, of, some countries give them laudable appointments. Absolutely. That is why, at the end of the day, some of them will not even want to serve for the full duration they are in, they are in service. Once they get up to 20, 25 years, where it is allowed for them to resign, they resign and go into politics because they want to be like you. Mm. They want to have access to the funds, the money too. Are they not part of you? Were yeah. they not civilians before they became military? Absolutely. They were. God help I, us. Amen. Now, let's come back to you now, Dr. Roy. He, he said a whole lot, and I'm, ex I'm certain you're excited that uh, he mentioned something about veterans. Uh, you know, that's your constitution constituency, so to speak. But let's come back to this issue, uh, the underlying currents about uh, that is pouring coups uh, across the, some countries in, in Africa now that has to be addressed. Because he said that um, if it is a matter of changing perhaps the narrative of where we've had some person say this is Africa trying to sanitize itself, you know, take power, you know, and manage its resources the way it is. I'm wondering if that is how you see it and what African leaders should begin to do now, what kinds of conversation they should be having such that they can stand and perhaps negotiate, stand with one front, speak with one voice, and then begin to negotiate for their countries in the interest of their people and not themselves. Okay. I, I, I appreciate you, sir. Mm. And um, we will buy you one cow. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, because if you go that direction, it's very passionate and it's hot. Anybody touching it and you have a human heart, you will be burned. Let's leave the veteran issue. Yeah. Let's go into this matter. AU, African Union. Union, is not African Leaders Union. ECOWAS is not Leadership Economic Community of West African States. It's for the people. The African Union is for the Africans. Why do we have leaders? from these countries, be the ones to travel to have meetings all the time. Okay. Why can't we have a block and a block and a block of representatives of sound minds that we sit down together, meet with their president first, harmonize discussions, takeaways, put them together in a communique and head to the echoes and say, this is what Nigeria wants. This one we say, this is what Ghana wants. This one we say, this is what Niger Republic wants. Mm -hmm. Then from there, ECOWAS goes to AU and say, endorse this for us. Because when sh and push comes to show, or show comes to push, we'll call you. Now, ECOWAS and AU, they are failing seriously because they turned it to a leadership jamboree where the leaders go for a meeting. We know that even when senators go for a retreat or House of Rep members go for a retreat, most times, when we are seeing the joke of off the mic, off the mic, most times is to share contracts, to discuss about benefits, personal benefits. My brother is calling you next week. My sister is coming to your office. So those are what Have you ever attended any of those? Meetings? I will show you. We, we have the... It's on public... No, I need that to it's be on sure. public media. <laughs> right. Where the man said all the senators were giving juicy contracts. Mm. It was there. They told him to off the mic. They said off the mic, off the mic. So when you allow presidents to go and be meeting for African countries. They are not coming with representation. They're not supposed to be there, mm -hmm. you know? And what are you going to put on the table? Each country selects sound minds that are going to talk about technology, agriculture, mines, uh, manufacturing, all the things that we do and we have, and find a way to interface with the Western world and see a 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever we can drag, agreement. 
to replace the archaic and outdated status quo. When the COVID came, mm. everybody saw that, hey, you must take a vaccine. But African countries said, we have solutions. Put this leaf and this nut and this stem and boil it and take it in the morning and in the night you'll be fine. Oh, no, NAVDA could not NAVDA it. Every other uh, standard organization could not make it stand because we wanted the vaccine from outside. This is what is our problem. We always want something from outside. If Africa and Africans will sit down today and say, let's negotiate the extraction, let's do it a phase by phase situation. Mm -hmm. Remove the president. Let the presidents begin to read and say, the people, you people said I should send to ECOWAS, came back with this, and they could sell this and agree. It will help the president. It removes the autocracy and all the um, powers that they think is wielding when he gives a voice to the people. Right. So AU should review relationships between African mineral resources, African opportunity with the West. Interesting. Now, your final word on this, especially uh, how you see this matter in Gabon being resolved, constitutional order being returned. The primary problem in Africa is that we are not manufacturing. So we don't have the capacity to manufacture the, the, the raw resources that we have. We, we, we send our resources to the West and to the other parts of the world, to China, and then we, in turn, we are, we are, we are, they, so, they sell back to us the finished product in higher costs. This is one way poverty has stood. Mm. This is one thing that has maintained poverty in this part of the world. The solutions to all of this is, one, welfare to the people. All right. Two, AU must come together to say, let's have a consensus. Even though they do not have the power, I repeat, they do not have the power to influence or amend individual constitutions in countries. But they could have a say to say, if you stay too long in power, you'll be attracting it. There's this, there's this fire burning, there, like I said now. All right. Okay, in between, 2020, between 2020 and 2023, yeah. we've had about eight coup d'etat. It must be discouraged. Right, it must be discouraged. And the matter of constitutional order returned, do you see that happening anytime soon? Yes or no? Where? In Gabon. ECOWAS does not have power there. It's only AU I know, that I'm... has power to go so to that So that's why I ask, yes or no, what do you see happening? They, they were there in 2019. They anyway. came again. So even if you remove them, now, what just... is the tendency that they will not come in another two years? Let's leave the conversation here now. Gentlemen, I, I must thank you for, for this interesting conversation we have had. Thank you, security consultant Dalin Tinumoru, as well as uh, military Pleasure. veteran and security consultant Dr. Roy Okidieve. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. I owe you a cow. <laughs> no, no, I, I'll, I'll pick the cow. I'll keep reminding you. I will help him pick it. <laughs> anyway, this is what we draw the curtains on the program this morning. But let's tell you that the views and reactions of all our resource persons are theirs and have no connection with TVC News. Denial again. Okay. Up next is your view with you Mariah are, and the you ladies. Have denied us again. And <laughs> afterwards is this morning with Yori for Larry. Stay with us. Bye for now. It was your opinion, not mine. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.